Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports by Shop's video about the HJC C80 helmet. There aren't many flip-up adventure helmets on the market. By my reckoning, we stock six models here at Sports Bike Shop, and this is the most recent addition. Some manufacturers just take a flip front helmet from their existing range, they add a peak and maybe redesign the chin bar to make it look a bit more adventure-y, and then you've got an adventure flip. But the C80 certainly appears to be all new rather than a jazzed up version of something that already exists. It runs an all polycarbonate shell, and if you're the sort of rider who's concerned by weight, then you could probably stop watching this video now. This size medium C80 weighs in on our scales at 1,936 grams, which makes it the heaviest of the 79 helmet models we've weighed so far. It's not even really a close run thing as this is 110 grams or so heavier than the next helmet down on the list. The chin bar has a single button release. You pull this one away from the chin bar and then it frees that to be lifted. The peak rotates back with the chin bar and that means that it stays clear of the visor to make sure it doesn't scratch it. You'll see there's a chin curtain here, and the reason I'm pointing that out is that actually I found this made it trickier to locate the release button when wearing winter gloves. You need to get between the chin curtain and the button to be able to operate it. This helmet isn't dual homologated, so it's not legal to ride with the chin bar up like this. There's no lock to stop the chin bar falling back over your eyes to block your view, and it doesn't stay up particularly firmly of its own accord. The owner's manual for this lid says to never ride with the chin bar up. Moving on to ventilation, it comes in through a rocking switch on the front, which allows air to flow through the chin bar and inside the lid. And there's a sliding shutter on top that opens up to let air come in through two holes to the inside of the helmet. It can then travel through deep channels in the EPS impact liner and then escape through exhaust vents at the rear of the shell. I found the venting to be reasonable when I wore this helmet. It's not something I'd necessarily write home about, but it worked and it allowed air to get inside the helmet and keep it fresh. The visor offers a good view in terms of height and width, and it's protected against mist by a pinlock insert that covers pretty much all of the visible area. It's pinlock 70, which is the middle of three grades of pinlock insert. A good thing to point out, if you need to adjust the tension of your pinlock for any reason, then you can do it just using a small screwdriver. By turning these screws here, you can make the pins closer to each other or further apart to increase or reduce the tension of the pin lock to try and get a better seal against the inner surface of the visor. There are some much more expensive lids than this one out there that don't make it so easy to fine tune your pin lock tension. The visor lifts and lowers with twin tabs, which is handy, but there aren't many stages to the visor operation. There are only two intermediate steps between open and closed. Personally, I would have liked another step to have the visor slightly open and get in a bit of airflow. This is the smallest gap you can have before it seals shut, and that's a bit too much of a step for me. The visor is easy to remove and refit, but you do need a screwdriver because you've got to remove the peak first. The peak can be left off if you want, which might be handy if you're suffering quite a bit of turbulence from it. There are spacers provided with the helmet that allow you to run the C80 peakless while retaining the visor. Equally, you can ditch the visor and run with just the peak as there's room in the eye port for a pair of goggles. The main visor is backed by an internal sun visor. It operates on this switch behind the left ear and the final step of the lifting motion has a slight resistance to make sure the visor doesn't easily slip back into your eye line if you don't want it to. That sun visor is anti-fog coated so you know your vision will stay clear when it's sunny and there's moisture in the air. So let's switch to the inside. The liner is fully removable and it's a really easy process to do that, and it's made from a moisture wicking material. There are recesses at the top of the cheek pads to make room for spectacle arms. I wore a pair of specs as part of this review, and they fitted in there really easily. Behind the cheek pads, there are also recesses for intercom speakers. This helmet is prepared for HJC's smart intercoms, so the battery stows away at the back here, and then the control module can be smaller and it clamps to the shell. Those intercoms are made for HJC by Senna, and we'll put links to those in the description for this video. As for other intercoms, I fitted a Senna 20S Evo without any trouble, using the clamp to attach it and the speakers easily fitted in the recess. I also tried a Cardo Pactalk Bold, and the speakers fitted into the recesses, but I found I would have needed to use the glue mount to attach the unit itself, because the clamp wouldn't go around the thick helmet rim just here. For those who want to know, a pair of Cardo 45mm speakers will sit neatly in the recesses, but they do end up sl sitting slightly proud, so you need to know how much room you've got between the helmet and your ears. Lastly, with the interior, the fastening strap for this helmet is a micrometric buckle-type fastener, which is all very normal for a lid like this. 
So let's talk about sizing and approvals. The C80 comes in sizes extra small through to double extra large. There are two shell sizes. The smaller shell covers lids up to and including large, while XL and 2XL share the bigger shell. In terms of approvals, it's approved to ECE 2205 for the road. It's not ACU gold for track or racing use, and it's not been tested by the UK government's SHARP program as we record this video. So finally, let's cover pricing. As we record this, the C80 costs 230 in plain colors, 260 pounds for graphics like this one. I hope that tells you everything you're hoping to find out about the HJC C80 helmet. But if there isn't a thing you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.